So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Across the sands of time and the pages of history, a tiny part of the human brain has fascinated philosophers, sages, and seekers of truth. This part, known as the pineal gland, and often referred to as the third eye, holds the key to vast spiritual realms, deeper understanding, and spiritual enlightenment. Though only the size of a pea, ancient masters from various traditions knew that it was the seat of awakening and a direct link to the divine. The interest in the pineal gland transcends cultural and historical boundaries. Echoing through time from Egyptian scrolls and Indian temples, to the mystical Jewish Kabbalah. These diverse traditions share a common view. The pineal gland is a source of power and spiritual connection. This universal acknowledgement hints at a shared ancient understanding of its importance, a secret key to unlocking inner wisdom. Today, we delve deeper into this mystery, bridging ancient wisdom with modern science. Our ancestors, Ranging from biblical prophets to Eastern gurus, possessed insights into the pineal gland that align with what contemporary researchers are beginning to appreciate about its role in human physiology and spirituality. In this exploration, we aim to unlock the secrets of how activating the pineal gland can open doors to profound spiritual experiences that will change your life forever. We will investigate historical and scriptural promises of meeting the divine face to face and learn precise ways to activate and awaken this part of ourselves. This journey promises to not only provide enlightenment about this mysterious gland, but also give you practical techniques for stimulating this process, leading you to heightened states of consciousness. As we explore the ancient paths and modern techniques to engage with this inner light, we will discover the way for a personal journey that leads to a deeper connection with higher consciousness and the universal mind. The pineal gland, a small endocrine gland in the brain, often referred to as the third eye due to its profound metaphysical associations, is anatomically located near the center of the brain. About the size of a grain of rice, this gland is tucked between the two hemispheres, nestled in a groove where the halves of the thalamus join. Despite its small size, the pineal gland plays a crucial role in the regulation of the body's sleep-wake cycle. It synthesizes and secretes melatonin, a hormone derived from serotonin, which influences the circadian rhythms, thus impacting our sleep patterns and seasonal functions. But the pineal gland's function extends beyond mere melatonin production. It is uniquely isolated from the blood-brain barrier system, allowing it to interact with a wide array of biochemicals. This peculiar aspect of its anatomy makes it integral to various studies on its potential broader impacts on human physiology. Throughout history, the pineal gland has been shrouded in mystery, often considered the anatomical equivalent of the spiritual seat of God. Each culture has its own interpretation of its significance, alongside unique practices intended to activate or harness its powers. In Hindu tradition, the pineal gland is associated with the Ajna Chakra, or the third eye. This chakra is located at the forehead between the eyebrows and is said to be the channel through which one achieves deep knowledge and insight. Many Hindus believe that awakening the third eye grants profound spiritual vision, enabling practitioners to discern the true essence of the universe. Meditation, in particular focusing the mind on the point between the eyebrows, is practiced to activate this chakra. It's believed that through consistent practice, one can create an inner clarity of divine sight, bridging the human experience with the divine realms. In ancient Egypt, the Eye of Horus was not just a symbol of protection and royal power, but was also considered a representation of the pineal gland. Located at the geometric center of the brain, the pineal gland was thought to be the physical manifestation of the third eye, a conduit to higher knowledge. The Egyptians engaged in various spiritual practices involving symbolism and meditation techniques that focused on awakening the inner eye. They believed this would enable them to see beyond the physical world into the spiritual realms, accessing wisdom that could guide the pharaohs and aid in their afterlife journey. 
In Kabbalah, the pineal gland is symbolically linked to the concept of the inner eye, capable of perceiving spiritual truths beyond the material. These practices also involve deep meditation, often utilizing the tree of life as a meditative tool to ascend through different planes of consciousness. By focusing on the crown, practitioners aspire to activate their pineal gland, facilitating a direct connection with the divine and receiving divine light, a metaphor for divine wisdom and insight. Each of these cultural perspectives emphasizes the gland's role not only as a physical organ, but as a mystical entity that connects the physical body to spiritual enlightenment. The various rituals and meditative practices aimed at activating the pineal gland reflect a shared desire to bridge the earthly and the divine, highlighting a common belief in its potential to unlock a deeper understanding of the cosmos and one's place within it. This deep, transcendent connection is often described as a portal to God. The Bible also gives us many clues that the pineal gland is the seat of God. Jesus' statement in Matthew 6, 22, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light, is frequently interpreted as a reference to the third eye or the pineal gland. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 30, it states, So Jacob called the name of the place Pineal, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Luke 11, verse 34 states, Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is unclouded, your whole body is full of light. Central to this interpretation is the idea of light and darkness and their significance in spiritual enlightenment. To become illuminated with this essence is highlighted frequently within the Bible pages. Matthew 5, verse 14 states, You are the light of the world. Proverbs 6, verse 23 says, for the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light. Ephesians 5 verse 8 says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. The Bible also refers to God as pure light rather than as a human figure. Numbers 23 verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. 1 John 1 verse 5, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. James 1 verse 17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Let's go a little deeper here to understand more about the pineal gland. Listen to William Donahue explain in his lecture titled, Talking to the Pineal. I want to show you overhead 10, and I want to show you, which is a brain. Yeah. It is. You want to see, did you ever see an angel? Turn it upside down. Right. Okay, I'm going to turn it back there. But let me show you, let me show you something here which is, which is interesting. The words I want you to look at here, if you can come up a little bit, okay. The ventricle interior okay da uh, can you come down here no okay right there there okay this is talking about the third ventricle its sides are formed by the optic thalami by a delicate band of white fibers the stria pinealis you see that right there stria pinealis s t r i a p i n e a l i s stria pinealis means straight line from the pineal okay so we got a straight line from the pineal, now if you lift this up, which runs along the junction, blah, 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 to join the pillars of the fornix. Do you see that? Okay. So we have the pineal, and from the pineal, we have a straight line, which was stria pineal, and it joins at the fornix of the brain. So there's a connection there. The word fornix means vault. And it is connected to the constellation word fornax, which means furnace. So here we have a situation in which the pineal gland of the brain receives the fire from the solar plexus, which is the place of the sun in your body, which runs up the spine, 
impacts the pineal gland, which is the light. The signal or the fire is then sent along the fuse, which is the stria pinealis, to the fornix or the furnace, which lights the furnace. And according to the scriptures, the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then are joined by the fourth. Well, all of that is mythology. And what it's saying is that when the fire from the solar plexus rises in meditation, impacts the pineal, it follows a fuse, which is called stria pinealis, to the fornix or the furnace, and there your physical, your intellectual, and your emotional are then joined by the fourth, which is the spiritual. So the whole basis of all the stories and all of this stuff happens based on anatomy, based on what goes on inside of your body, based on what, on, on what goes on inside of your head, based on what is the connection between all of the things in the sky. You've got a single eye in the sky. You've got a fornix, a fornax in the sky. Because the same thing happens in this great brain, which is the universe, as happens inside of you. There are also many references in the Bible to finding this light of God in the darkness. Psalms 18, verse 11. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Amos 5, verses 18 through 20. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark, without a ray of brightness? Matthew 4, verse 16, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region in shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. John 1, verse 5, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The pineal gland is the brain's primary light receptor, and this connection between light and the gland's activity hints at a deeper spiritual interaction. It's important to note that darkness stimulates the pineal gland to secrete melatonin, whereas exposure to light inhibits this process. So, the pineal gland in your brain plays a crucial role in regulating your sleep by producing melatonin, a hormone that helps you sleep. When it's dark, your eyes signal to your brain that it's time to wind down. We also know that this is the perfect time to impress the subconscious mind, which is an intimate connection with the universal mind. So what does this have to do with activating your third eye? Listen once again in this clip as William Donahue explains. You have to use the pineal gland in the dark if you want to make contact with this light. The darkness is the secret place of God. That when we pray, we should enter the secret place, which is obviously darkness. And that the day of the Lord is darkness, even very dark, and no brightness in it. And we have developed convincing evidence that the pineal gland, which Jacob noted when he saw God face to face, is active in the dark. Look at overhead B8. And in overhead B8, it's a little difficult to see, but here it says, Genesis 32, 30, I have seen God face to face. That means he has come face to face with this light, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. There's a very strange verse. So, so you see this? You see the fire, Peniel. You see the straight line, Stria Penealis. And you see the furnace, okay? There's a very strange scripture that shows up in Genesis chapter 15. And it, it doesn't mean anything because, well, look what it says. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between. Did you ever, I mean, did you ever even consider, I probably you've never even seen this before. But could you ever understand that this is mythological statements of symbolism, dark sayings, talking about the activity inside of your brain and what happens to bring you enlightenment, what happens to bring you healing, what happens to bring you eternal life? Talk about eternal life. The doctors and the scientists are now talking about when they have this DNA all corrected and mapped out, people living three, four, five hundred years. 
And so there, again, we have the fact that this smoking furnace that delivers you, that brings this angel of God, angel of light to you, the fornix of your brain is touched by the fire, the burning lamp, the pineal gland, when? When it's dark. So you got to do it this way. I don't really care where you do it. Go out and sit in the car at night. Or turn, go in the bathroom. Turn the light off. Do it for a few minutes. So the text indicates the location of God or light to be in the dark place. This third eye, this pineal gland, is not privy to the Bible or to the followers of Jesus who spoke of the single eye. You remember we found it in the text in Overhead 233? You remember the text of Aradamus when Aradamus entered in? It was the eye of Horus, the all-seeing eye of the gods in the temple of the living God, and there the <coughs> eye opened. So there was this ancient Egyptian text about that single eye, which we've seen in the sky. The question becomes, how can we as individuals align ourselves with this divine light through stimulation of the pineal gland? Activating the pineal gland is a very personal journey that helps us connect with our deeper selves and reach higher levels of awareness. The third eye, which is an energy center, naturally opens up when you're ready for such changes, but you can also help it along if you feel prepared to do so. However, some spiritual teachers and experienced practitioners advise being careful with methods that change your consciousness. This is why it's important to be cautious and take your time when starting to open your third eye. Pay attention to your thoughts, feelings, and physical sensations to find the best way forward for yourself. For this process, as Mr. Donahue stated, creating an environment that becomes absolutely pitch black during meditation and focusing on this gland begins the process of awakening it. Secondly, let's talk about the power of the sacred symbol, Om. This symbol originates from ancient Indian spiritual traditions and is considered one of the most important spiritual symbols in Hinduism. It is said to be the primal sound from which all other sounds and creation emerge. Referred to as the sound of the universe, it symbolizes the manifestation of God in form and is used to signify the essence of the ultimate reality, consciousness. This syllable consists of three sounds that encompass all potential sounds and their combination. These symbolize the three stages of cosmic creation. When pronounced correctly, it incorporates the sounds corresponding to the start, middle, and end of all possible sounds. When you chant the syllable during meditation, it creates a vibration. This vibration originates in your solar plexus and reverberates within your skull. Traditionally, it is said that repeating this chant can produce a sensation of warmth and heat that activates the pineal gland, causing it to release its fluid. From there, this secretion then swiftly travels down the spinal column and spreads across every cell in the body. It's been stated that during this process, your DNA becomes receptive to divine messages conveyed through photons of light. So using pitch black dark for meditation and the OM chant, you begin to activate the pineal gland. To further this practice, imagine the center of your mind as a radiant point of light or a serene space that radiates peace and potential. This light symbolizes the essence of your being and the source of your creative power. Next, you can concentrate on the area between your eyebrows, which is known as the third eye energy center. Imagine breathing in a golden white light through this spot. Stay calm and don't push for any specific results. It might need some practice, but many people have found this technique to be very powerful. When you focus your energy on the pineal gland like this, you're directing all of your personal energy to that spot. When it's becoming activated, you might feel a pulsing or a slight pressure there. Some people even say it feels like there's a tiny heartbeat in that area. After feeling the sensation, you can then direct your visualization further if you'd like to continue the process. Visualize this sphere of light or energy moving from the forefront of your consciousness towards the glowing center of your mind. See this sphere of light gently merge with the light at the core of your mind, signifying the integration of the divine as a part of you. Feel this merge. As this light merges with the light at the center of your mind, feel a sense of unity and acceptance. 
as if the divine light has fused with your own inner light. This feeling may manifest as warmth, expansion, or a deep sense of peace. This simple yet profound practice has the ability to activate the third eye, the tiny yet powerful organ of the pineal gland nestled within the brain for deeper spiritual experiences, heightened awareness, and connection to the divine. As a side note, you can also use this pineal power for deliberate manifestation. The act of directing a vivid, sensory-rich visualization of your desire into the center of the mind actually stimulates both hemispheres of the brain simultaneously. The right hemisphere engages with the creative, imaginal aspects of the visualization, while the left hemisphere processes the logical, sequential, and spatial details of the envisioned scene. This bilateral engagement encourages the hemispheres to work in concert, enhancing neural connectivity and promoting whole brain functioning. When done properly, your conscious desire and your subconscious mind begin to agree, acknowledging that this scene that you've created in your mind is a true possibility and can be manifested as a tangible result. Much like the pineal gland activation, after vividly creating your mental scene with all of your senses engaged and connecting emotionally to that visualization, focus on channeling this vivid, sensory-rich visualization into the very core of your mind, or what's been referred to in this video as the seat of God. Cultures across the world and ages have recognized this connection, integrating it into their spiritual practices to enhance mindfulness, create connection with the divine, and achieve higher states of consciousness. By understanding and applying these ancient techniques in our modern lives, we too can explore the potential of the pineal gland to bridge the gap between the physical and the spiritual, leading us towards holistic well-being and a deeper understanding of our place within the universe.